Good morning. It's really early for a lot of people. I'm actually still in my pajamas and that's, um, well, it's kind of on purpose, but it's also going to be part of this video. So for years and years and years, I would have told you that I am not a morning person because I did not want to get up early in the morning. I did not want to drive in a car for 45 minutes to go to work. I didn't want to sit in traffic. I just didn't want to deal with all that. Well, guess what? I don't like traffic. Hey, Deborah. I don't like traffic at two o'clock in the afternoon. I don't like traffic at 11 o'clock in the morning. I just don't like traffic. But I let that, for years and years and years of doing that, I let that make me think that I wasn't a morning person. Plus, I always tried to do what other people did in their mornings. I tried to get up and do a long, in-depth Bible study. I tried to do certain things, and I just it just wasn't me. Um, I didn't remember what I read, or I just kind of really stumbled along, or I thought I was supposed to relax in the morning time. I thought I was just to just get up and just, um, you know, actually like do like my husband does. My husband has an amazing morning routine. Um, it's long, it's drawn out. He thrives when he does that. It gets his day started. If I do that, my whole day's wasted. I get more done in an hour in the morning time, right when I wake up, than if I wait to do that later on in the day. So let's look at this. My goal is to thrive. My goal is for you to thrive. I think we should all thrive. I think our lives are better, our family's lives are better, and um, our place in the world is better when we are thriving. Um, I already pointed out to you how I used to not do real well in the morning time. Well, over the years, I've attended different trainings, whether it's business training or self-improvement or just whatever, um, and I've really learned a lot from that. One of the things that changed my life was accepting that I am a note person. I take notes, I keep notes, and I'm a list person. I have lists for lists. I will have a list of things I need to do. I wanna check them off when I do it. And if I have done extra stuff, I put that extra stuff on my list. I like my list, I keep my list. My list transfer from day to day. So if I don't get something done on my list, I'll get it done the next day. I went to some brain training um, in Dallas. The police department offered it at, I think it's the Brain Institute. I'll have to confirm that because I do wanna put some sources in the notes here. But I went there and they talked about getting things done and about procrastination and all that. And they used a theory of elephants and squirrels. The elephants have to be done. The squirrels just run in and out of your day and out of your schedule and you can get those done when it happens. It follows the theory of the rocks, the sand, and the stone and a glass, that you have to put the large rocks in the glass first, and then you can put the smaller rocks, and you can put the sand in, and everything goes in. But if you put the sand in first, the stones and the rocks aren't gonna go in there. So I had to learn there's nothing wrong with being a list person. There's nothing wrong with taking notes. I have notes for this video right now, and believe me, I can talk without notes but um, I like to make sure that I do hit the things um, that I planned on saying. But you know, people, other people can be critical of that. They might make some comments about, oh, your list, oh, you have to be organized. Everybody is wired differently. If somebody's making fun of you for your list, they probably don't use lists. So just keep that in mind. Um, what's, the, uh, what's the statement? Don't um, listen to someone's opinion if you wouldn't go to them for advice. And it's a little mean, but it does kind of make the point. So I learned that I was a list person. Well, then I had to learn when to do the things that are on my list. Now, sometimes you don't have any options. You have children, you have schedules, you have jobs, you have life. You have to get things done when you can. I'm in a little different situation now. My time is pretty much my time and I can plan it. Um, I listened to some training, some leadership training from Ange Peters, a Canadian a woman, um, in doTERRA and she's a prepper and a life hack she's just amazing and I listened to something to her that just was life-changing for me and that was know when to do what you need to do know when in your day is best to do your stuff I have learned my Bible study is best in the afternoon I am a consumer in the afternoon I'm a producer in the morning so if I get up and hit the ground running, I can produce, 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 and get so much done. 
Um, if I try to do that in the afternoon, I don't really get as much done. The afternoon is a very good time for me to consume. That's a very good time for me to read things, read things that I want to keep, read things that I want to um, utilize. So what my morning looks like currently is I get up, I take my thyroid hormone, and I come out to the house, into the, the dining room, the kitchen, and I have some hot tea that my husband made for me. I go back in the bedroom and I do a quick devotional. Kathy Robinson gave me a beautiful little quick devotional to do every morning. Um, I get that done and then I pick up my phone and I start looking at anything that's happened overnight that requires my immediate attention and then I hit my list. I start getting things done on my list. So some other things that could be helpful for y'all that was very helpful for me is learning what my strengths are. Eddie Villa does a fabulous, uh, lots of free training on this of knowing what your strengths are. And um, I don't want to use the term weaknesses, it's just when you're not acting in your strengths. So a lot of times, if we're uncomfortable, if we feel like we're dragging, if we feel like we're failing, if we have these negative thoughts, negative energy, a lot of times it's because we're trying to do things in a way that is not our strength. So I really recommend that y'all look into that. Now if the strength thing isn't really what you want to do, there's a lot of other things you can do, and I'm gonna mispronounce this. It's the Enneagram test. Enneagram, search with an E if you look it up. Um, it also tells you a lot about yourself. And uh, there's life mapping that tells you a lot about yourself. There's different personality tests. Hey, Eddie, there's a different personality tests that you can take. Now, um, obviously, all of these things should come together and blend. They should come together and be somewhat similar um, and tell you how you're wired. And that could be very, very, very helpful for yourself so that you know how to go about doing things. Um, another example that I have learned on this is that I, not only am I a producer, but I am an energizer. So I, if I learn something, I share it. I learn it, I share it. I learn it, I share it. I don't learn it and keep it inside of me. I learn it and I share it. And that has caused me some heartache because people that are very close to me are not necessarily sharers. And so I would be very embarrassed because I'm like, what is wrong with me? Why, why am I doing this? And then some people have even said, oh, you know, it's all about you. And I'm like, I'm just sharing something that I thought could help people. I realize that's how I'm wired. That's how I'm wired. And I've also noticed that people around me are more comfortable when I am myself. I'm not trying to be something else. I mean, I have to be, you know, obviously polite and respectful and, and all that. I mean, you, have, you can't be unkind, you can't be a bully. But um, I found that if I am comfortable in myself, people around me are comfortable and the relationships do a lot better. So again, I've learned that I'm a producer, I've learned that I'm a note taker, I'm a list um, a maker, and I like to share knowledge when I have it. I also found out that I am a yes person. That doesn't mean that I say yes to people all the time. It means that if I hear something and it sparks me, my immediate response is yes. Yes. My body, my brain says yes. It, it accepts it in and it starts looking at it and it starts uh, massaging it around and seeing where it fits into my life. That was important to know because when you hear other people say, oh, you're such a yes person, that might mean you're saying yes to too many things. It doesn't mean that I'm committing to too many things. It means that my brain accepts them and I start looking at them. Other people are not wired that way. Other people are no people. Other people are, ooh, let's wait people. None of those are bad. None of this is better than the other. Just know what you are. Um, so one more thing I'm forgetting here. Oh, chain of command. So that's kind of funny because anybody who knows that I was a cop for 30 years knows that chain of command is very important. I'm also a military brat. Chain of command was very important. The base commander mattered. You didn't want to get your dad in trouble, so you had to always follow the rules because you were under that chain of command, being under your sponsor, you know, the military person. So I have tried to translate this into my personal life. And I'll give you a little example. Um, in one of my businesses, in my essential oil business, there are people who have been doing it a lot longer than me, doing the business longer than me. Um, even if I've used oils longer than them, they were doing the business longer than me. 
Um, and I honestly believe that they are my, my superiors, not, not better than me. Um, that's, that's not a judgment. It's they are above me. They are in my chain of command. I must defer to them. I must always make sure that I have given them the power and that I follow them. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. There are some people who don't want to be followed. There's some people who it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. And I was like stepping on myself, keeping myself down and not serving people in a way that I could because I didn't want to step over other people. And it doesn't, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. So I had to learn what are my strengths, how to work within my strengths, still follow my beliefs, respect other people, but be, be myself, be myself. And um, that has really mattered a lot. It's really improved things for me. It's improved things in my personal life. My husband is not wired like me. We have the ultimate same end goals, but we get to those goals differently. So what I would really hope that you are able to do is number one, just be comfortable with yourself. Learn about yourself. Look at other people, see um, what they have to offer Take those little tests. I, I don't mean the Facebook tests that tell you like what your animal is that day or, or, or the fun stuff like that. I mean real stuff, scientifically based, historically based tests that tell you where you thrive. Um, once you learn about yourself, don't let it scare you. Don't, don't say, oh, I don't wanna be that. I wanted to be this other thing. Um, but just learn about yourself, learn where you fit in with other people, learn how you fit in with other people, look at your relationships, and do your best to thrive. Rearrange your life a little bit if you have to, if you have the ability to do that. Make it to where you can get stuff done in the morning, where you can get stuff done right before you go to bed, whatever works for you. Um, I think I covered every, oh, one other thing. I am a go, 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 go kind of person. And then I hit a wall and I stop. And I was very embarrassed by that. And um, people who cared about me would say, you're killing yourself. You have to slow down. They're right. They're absolutely right. With me being a go, hey Joanne, with me being a go, go, go kind of person, what I have to recognize is where that wall is. So instead of going and going and going and hitting that wall, I have to go and go and go. I have to see the wall and say, ooh, okay, I'm almost at my limit. Let's look at what needs to be done. Let's look at what matters and let's take a break. That's what I needed to do. So it's okay to be a go, go, go person. It's just not okay to be a go, go, go person, slam into the wall and, um, and, and take a little bit longer to recover from that. It's better for me to go, be a go, go, go person a certain amount of hours a day and then find the relaxation after that um, than it is to go, 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 hit a wall and just be done. So I had to have that conversation with my husband because um, again, we're wired differently. And he's like, you don't always have to be going. And I said, when, I, when I'm not going, I'm not comfortable. I'm not enjoying the movie. I'm not enjoying whatever we're doing. I have to get done what I need to get done and then I can enjoy things. Now, am I working on that a little bit more? Absolutely. Do I expect other people's um, day and schedule to revolve around mine? Absolutely not. But I'm learning to respect other people and I'm really learning how to respect myself in that also. So, lots of information. Um, I will get some sources posted for you. I would love to know what you have done in your life to get your schedule working better for you. I would, your failures, your successes, you're still working on it. Um, and also any additional sources that you might have that I can look into, that I can bring to other people. Thanks so much, y'all. Bye-bye.